Hi everyone and welcome to Steve's Jobs. Now today's video is going to be about the electric 2CV I built in 1998 and 99. Now in 1997 I had been to the world meeting of 2CVs in Holland and there I saw a Japanese electric 2CV. Now it was quite a good job but I just didn't quite think it's how I would have done an electric 2CV. The motor was 30 kilowatts, which is a really big, powerful and heavy motor. And it didn't have much in the way of batteries at all. So I thought really I'd have done it differently. I'd have put probably a less powerful motor in, but more batteries to give it a much better range. So what I want to talk to you about today is what I did to my electric 2CV. Now the first thing when you're building an electric 2CV you'll need is a good chassis. Um, the chassis I've got here is um, was a genuine Citroen PO type chassis, a replacement chassis that had been hot dip galvanized by the guy I bought it off in Liverpool in the late 80s. Um, and it was in perfect condition, but as you can see, a little bit ripply on the flat panels because of, because of heat distortion. But apart from that, it was a really good chassis and as you can see, painted red and was probably the best chassis I've ever had. So. Because of the extra weight, it was a perfect foundation for a electric 2CV. Now, as you can see, the first thing I did when converting the 2CV was take all the front end off the car. So what's happened here, I've removed all the panels, the bonnet, uh, the engine's all totally gone. The lamp bar has gone as well. And that's how I started off with a totally open front end of the car. The next thing to do was to make a an adapter to put the motor onto the gearbox. So as you can see here, I've used a quarter inch aluminum sheet, which is quite adequate for holding the motor, which is a Lynch type of motor. And um, I made a, the drive coupling was actually made with the um, center of spline center of a clutch attached to the motor. Now the motor itself is a Lynch motor, um, a Lemco LEM 200. And one thing different from standard was it had been banded with Kevlar. So normally Lynch motors can rev to about 4,000 RPM, but this could rev to 6,000 RPM. Now that was much better for a 2CV because of course, uh, 4,000 in an RPM in top gear is about 50 miles an hour, which wouldn't have been that good really. But 6,000 RPM is getting you to 70 miles an hour, which is much more satisfactory for a 2CV. It also increases the power. Um, it was I was running it at 96 volts rather than 72 volts, so it was also able to put out about 15 kilowatts. Now the one disadvantage about this motor is because it's quite small and not very heavy, it doesn't have much thermal inertia, so it's not very good at running at higher currents than its rated current for, for extended periods of time. So that's something you have to be careful of with the Lynch motor is to make sure you rev it and allow it to cool as well as you can. So there's another view of the front end of the car. You can see I made the uh, mount out of um, angle iron bolted to the bottom of the plate there. So the next thing to do was to work out where the speaker controller was going. And this was the one big mistake I made. So I thought putting the speaker controller there would be perfect. It would be nicely cooled by all the cool air coming in through the grill. Um, but what I forgot was also the rain and snow and all the general crap that comes off, off a road would also co come in through the grill. And that was the, at the end, I'll tell you later, was the downfall of the car because eventually the speed controller um, got damp and started to in, have intermittent issues with it, which is the last thing you need in an electric car you, you drive on the road. That's another view there. As you can see, box just under the motor there. And you can see now I've added the top mount on top of the motor there, and that was to actually locate the battery box, because half the batteries were in the front under the bonnet, and the other half were in the back of the car. Another view there, with it all painted up. And then this is with the battery box in. Now I made the battery boxes out of foam, which I glued together and then put two layers of fiberglass over. It became a really, really solid box and quite well insulated as well. You will notice I had to cut the corners out though to clear the uh, lamp bars because access in general was very tight there. And you'll see it there with the batteries in. So three batteries vertically there and one laid on its side. 
Now I could only do this because I had um, AGM type batteries. These were Champion GNBs, 100 amp power each, 12 volts, and they weighed about 25 kilos each. So that's how they were situated in the front. You can see there how, where I cut away the um, foam to get the lamp bar, to clear the lamp bar. And there I cut away the corner as well to clear the brake master cylinder. So very tight fit as you can see. Uh, again, that's it with the wired up now. So wired all the batteries up together, all in series to give 96 volts and connected up to the speed controller and the speed controller is connected to the motor. Um, we've also there, you can't quite see it, but on the bulkhead is the battery charger there. If I did the battery charger, the battery charger would come a, a forklift truck, just like the speed controller actually. And the other thing that's very difficult to see, but there is actually also a, a emergency stop there button, which goes through the bulkhead into the cabin with a big red button on it. So that was the layout at the front of the car. You can see the motor just about, the speed controller in front of it. On top of those, a fiberglass belt box with the batteries in and the charger on the bulkhead and the e-stop going through the bulkhead. So that's us uh, starting to charge it up there as you can see with the uh, cable there and um, we charged it with a normal 13 amp plug um, which did get quite warm I have to say because it should have been a 16 amp plug um, but just about worked okay. So the next thing to do was to take some weight out of the car one of the things we did here was to remove the rear fuel tank and you can see the gap of no fuel tank in there. I'll talk later about some of the other things we did to try and improve the car's performance and some of the things that I was hoping to have done before I took the car off the road to improve its range and performance. You can see here the rear batteries, four of them across the car. You see they sit just behind the front seats and this is with all the batteries in position and the seat in position as well. They wouldn't really have wanted to sit in this car but it looked all right. So that's a view from the front there with the um, sit looking at the motor from behind the grill. Uh, now also this car needed some bodywork doing so we need to re replace the vent flap. Vent flaps are famous on 2TVs for rusting so we replaced the vent flap and as you can see it looks quite good actually. Next thing to do then was to test drive it up and down the driveway. So several pics here of me driving up and down the driveway and finally to actually use it. And you'll see here this is me actually driving it on the street. Um, I'll talk more about its performance as I said in another video and it's doing a useful job here of actually carrying some plants home from the garden centre. So I hope it's been interesting for you. Um, a quick introduction to how I built an electric 2TV. In the future, I'll also put together a bit of a video about the performance of the car, um, its range, how fast it would go, and also the improvements I was in the course of making while uh, when eventually the car went off the road. Um, because what, what I'll, I've come to the conclusion is, as an electric car, it was incredibly efficient, much more efficient than any modern electric car. Perhaps that's no surprise, given it only weighed about 750, 800 kilos. Um, but I would like to talk about in a separate video because it might be quite interesting and also what you could do nowadays with the kind of components you can get for electric cars. So I hope you found this interesting if you do and if you've enjoyed it please like and subscribe and you'll get more videos in future.